Hello and welcome to today's hardware check. In fact, the very first Digistore hardware check ever to be broadcasted on the internet. So um, stay tuned, we will have um, more of them very shortly. So we're going to kick off with today's DBS Spicer Box Ultra. Um, in case you've never heard of that before, it is a central storage solution developed by DVS Digital Video Systems in Germany. And it's basically based around a store next file system, which is an industry standard for SAN solutions. This is how it looks like from the front. So it's a compact unit and it um, runs Linux Red Hat has 24 disks with a capacity of 48 terabytes if you're using SATA drives. If you use SAS drives, um, you will have um, with 24 disks, again, um, a capacity of only 14.4 terabytes. So the big difference between SATA and SAS drives is essentially the performance. Um, SAS drives are much faster than SATA drives, um, but they are also much more expensive and you get less capacity in the storage system if you use SAS drives. The system comes with two quad-core CPUs and 12 gigabytes of RAM. DVS Spicer Box is running a content management software which is called DVS Spicer. So basically a software which is designed to um, um, handle, browse and manage um, long DPX sequences or overall media sequences. Another key software feature of that um, um, storage system is um, the Mephisto defragmentation software, which is very essential because the whole system is based on the Quantum Store Next file system. And as I already mentioned, it is an industry standard. Um, um, systems like, for example, XN are based on Store Next as well. Alright, so before I continue to take a look at the hardware components, um, let me explain why we here at Digistore think that the Spicer Box is quite an innovative system. So in order to explain it a little bit better, let me show you this diagram here. It is a, I would say, common store next SAN setup. So here on the right hand side, we have the client machines, in this case Mac only, but um, it could be any sort of um, operating system. So we have a bunch of clients, um, video editors, um, finishing systems, <clears throat> and they are all connected to the SAN with a fiber channel interface. So the fiber channel connection allows a very, very high throughput, um, which you cannot achieve if you're using a standard Ethernet connection. So the way you connect to a SAN is through a fiber channel switch and then the switch is connected to a storage device as well as a so-called metadata controller. Without the metadata controller, which is managing the Stornext file system, the data on the storage here itself would quickly become corrupted because no one or no system is actually managing the read and write access. Um, now this setup here is a quite expensive setup because it's completely based on fiber channel and in fact very often you do not need fiber channel high-speed connections for um, uh, work sta workstations which are using compressed formats. So um, <clears throat> that's why most Stornext SANs have another um, topology which is um, Ethernet based. Very often you may find that the network sharing is not done by a separate dedicated computer, but by the metadata controller. Um, this is possible. You do not need a separate computer, but um, due to the many IOs that need to be managed, um, it is generally wise to have a dedicated computer. So as you can see here, um, a standard and common Stornex setup can be quite complex here on the left hand side when it comes to storage and management computers. So with the DVS Spicer Box Ultra, all these components of a SAN are basically merged into a single one. And you can even get rid of the fiber channel switch and Ethernet switch uh, if you do not exceed a certain amount of client computer, so you just plug them into the box directly. Having said that, let's take a look at the Spicer box itself. First of all, the front view. 
The front, of course, has the 24 disks where the video storage or the video data is, um, is, is, is stored. So um, they are divided into RAID sets, um, RAID 5 sets. Actually, one RAID 5 set for every eight disks. Having three separate RAID sets allows you, first of all, to increase the performance with RAID 5 um, um, RAID technology anyway, but it also means that every RAID set can lose a video disk without losing data. Okay, so um, this adds to an extra amount of security. Okay, so mm, let's take a look at the Spicer Box rear, um, the rear view. First of all, we can see here um, a bunch of two and a half inch discs. Um, the top discs are for the operating system. So Linux Red Hat is actually mirrored for um, extra security. And the lower disk are used for the Quantum Store Next metadata. So the metadata is actually the most important data on a SAN because it points to the video data. And in this system, we have all the aspects of the file systems um, independent from each other. The operating system is separately protected and independent from the set of, of um, uh, metadata. And the metadata, again, is separated from the video storage. So this is a very secure and very reliable, therefore, um, setup. Furthermore, we have a decent graphics card. So a lot of servers provide just the VGA port. The Spicer Box comes with a decent graphics card. Um, furthermore, we have here in the middle a fiber channel card with four ports, which, for example, we can directly connect to um, finishing systems, a Smoke and a DaVinci. Um, but we also could connect um, one or more fiber channel switches. Um, that leaves us with two slots which are here not used, but um, you can connect other computers to it. For example, a Linux workstation, the Autodesk Linux workstations prefer the InfiniBand topology. So if you have Autodesk systems, you just plug in an InfiniBand card and you're ready to go. Furthermore, if you just want to work um, over Ethernet, you plug in an Ethernet card and can connect laptops, for example, or just standard computers which are using Ethernet connections. Um, <clears throat> the last two slots here, or actually all three slots, are used for the internal system, for the internal disks, except this connector here, which allows you to directly attach a separate storage unit and mount it on the Spicer box to share it with other computers. If this is, for example, a RAID unit that has been used in a different facility or in a different room, you can um, directly connect it to the Spicer box and copy, for example, the data onto it or directly play off that system if you want. <clears throat> okay, so that's a quick and brief look at um, the connectivity that you have on the box, which is uh, quite massive, I think, and very flexible. Um, what sort of configurations are possible when you are having just a single box? Because, of course, you can scale a Spicer box and have multiple systems. But how far can you actually implement it in a, a workflow with different computers? So I have two examples. An example one is uh, very straightforward. I have two finishing systems and they are directly connected over fiber channel. Okay, so this allows two concurrent 2K streams um, at the same time on the same box with the same file system. So this is a quick and easy workflow. And as soon as I have more workstations, I may want to go over Ethernet, for example. So this is an example. In the middle, we have uh, an Ethernet switch which connects over 1 gig E, a standard Ethernet connection to, let's say, laptops, and to eliminate any bottlenecks between the storage system and the Ethernet switch, you would use a 10 gig E connection. So this is a fairly simple setup. A typical workflow could look like this in example two. You have the very same Ethernet setup, 
and the workstations are working off the same system using MXF or ProRes files. So they, these files are actually on the, con on the central storage. And once the edit is done, you end up with an EDL or an ALE or an, or an XML. It, it doesn't matter, you have some sort of metadata exchange format which uh, you use on an online system to conform. So the next step could be, for example, that the very same files are conformed on a finishing system like a Smoke on Mac. And since the Smoke on Mac works natively with DPX files, every render is a DPX file. Although it works natively with the ProRes files, it would always render and cache DPX files basically. So um, very often you have a separate and dedicated directly attached storage just for the caching and rendering because you don't really want to hammer a cent you don't really want to hammer a central SAN um, with all these IOs. Okay. So um, this would be one solution. But if you want, you certainly could use the Spicer box as the so-called local storage for a machine like the smoke. Um, so the smoke stores DPX files and then it creates a final output back onto the Spicer box. So that will be uh, the, the finished version of the offline edit that was previously done by the Final Cuts or Avid systems. So the last step sometimes may be um, a grading of the complete finished movie or film on a separate machine. So in this case it is a DaVinci system. <clears throat> the DaVinci again works more or less the same way like a smoke. It would um, work internally with DPX files, for example, or uncompressed files in general, and therefore um, prefers to use its own dedicated storage. So again, you would use a central storage system to read the files and then cache and render files, <clears throat> intermediate files basically on the local storage and then just output the finished version back on the system. So having these directly attached storages generally just improve the overall workflow and um, frees the SAN, the central storage, um, to provide a needed bandwidth to other computers. So you would use the Spicer box either as a central storage to literally host all media or you would um, use it just to share, push and pull data concurrently um, which has been finished rather than some intermediate render files. So in summary, the Spicer Box Ultra provides you a Stornex SAN in a box, which is a great thing actually. Redundant hardware components, power supplies for example, um, the system disk, the metadata disk, the video disk, everything is basically redundant. Um, lots of operating systems are supported. This is a key feature of Stornex SANS. Literally every post-production workstation can be connected to a Stornex SAN, almost without exceptions. The flexible connectivity is a key feature of this box. It doesn't matter if you have InfiniBand, Ethernet or Fiber Channel, all of these things can be connected. It gives you a very high performance with SATA drives, it gives you two streams of 2K uncompressed and on top of that the full NAS functionality. So you can have a bunch of Final Cut Pro or Media Composer workstations working on the Spicer box and at the same time have two concurrent streams of 2K <clears throat> reading and writing to the box. Okay, so that pretty much concludes the hardware check today and um, I see you next time. Stay tuned.